Hey folks, Dr. Alex Harrison here from Alacrity Endurance, and today we're going to talk about how much sodium you should eat as an endurance athlete, both during training and around the clock. What we're going to talk about today are your daily considerations, what you should think about to decide how much sodium you need every 24 hour period. What are your training demands? What does the training demand of you and how much sodium do you need because of that? And then what should you do pre-training? Here are the things that you need to think about to decide how much sodium you need daily. It's pretty simple. So you need to figure out how much sodium you're losing during exercise, roughly. The good news here is that your body's super good at figuring out how to regulate your blood sodium level because if it weren't, you would die. So you can be pretty far off on your daily sodium needs and still have pretty good performance and great health. Figure out sweat rate, concentration of your sweat, your exercise duration, and then multiply them all together. So if I'm sweating one liter per hour and I have a thousand milligrams of sodium per liter of sweat and I exercise for three hours, I'm losing 3000 milligrams of sodium for my exercise. I did that by multiplying those three things together. You can add sodium for any noticeable non-exercise sweating. So if you work in a labor job, you might want to factor in your, your day labor into your sweat totals and your sodium loss totals. And then you can add 500 to 1500 milligrams of sodium. So add 500 to 1500 to that original 3000 number, plus any like work sweat or sweat at home. Uh, and <laughs> sorry, that was terrible. That was for you married folks. I won't do that again. Uh, you should factor in your alcohol into your sodium intake uh, because it is a diuretic and you will lose more sodium than you would normally lose if you drink alcohol. Uh, one glass of wine, probably not gonna make it to my calculator tonight. So 3000 plus 500 to 1500 for that three hour training day, you might need 3500 to 4500 milligrams of sodium to have optimal performance and good health. Pretty simple. You can air higher if you have proclivity to cramping or if you tend to be that person who swells up during exercise if you are that person who swells up during exercise you might just have like really salty sweat and end up getting like mildly hyponatremic not like clinically relevant hyponatremia but just performance relevant hyponatremia uh, if you do swell up during exercise chances are you could use a little bit more sodium if you are a person who just generally drinks a lot of water like around the clock it might be wise to have a bit more sodium around the clock too and air on that like 1500 milligrams side of thing now if you have like diagnosed hypotension, every time you go to the doctor, it's like 96 over 59 blood pressure or like 100 over 65, and you get faint sometimes, it could probably like triple all of these sodium recommendations. I'm not joking, triple, and feel better and perform better. My wife is one of those cases. Now I'm the opposite case where I can exercise 20 hours a week doing endurance training, have 10% body fat, and I'm going to have hypertension. I have my hypertension is medicated with 10 milligrams of lisinopril. Talk to your doctor. The point is you probably don't need to err on the high side uh, if you have hypertension that you're dealing with um, check with your doctor my experience with clients who have hypertension or are diagnosed with hypertension and have it medicated down back to normal tensive the biggest thing that they tend to do is limit the sodium consumption during training like when they're sweating heavily and a lot of the folks that have hypertension are like bigger guys like me if you have prehypertension or hypertension uh, and are larger you actually probably have higher sweat rates and higher sodium loss rates than the average bear. And what that means is you can actually get away with having and should have more sodium if you want. That might even make it easier to have less sodium later at night when you don't really need it. All right, let's talk specifics about during training. How should we implement sodium intake during training or during racing? Ideal consumption is replace what is being lost in your sweat, plain and simple. Sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes it's not optimal, but if it can be done and it can be done without GI distress, then it should be done. You take your sweat rate and your sweat concentration and you multiply them and you match loss rate. Now, I do not advocate sweat testing, so you're probably wondering how on earth you're going to know those things. The good news is when sodium consumption becomes important, generally gut limits are the limiting factor in how much you can consume. If you're sweating heavily, that's when you need sodium the most. That's when we should be paying attention to how much sodium you're consuming. And that's also when your sodium intake could, uh, if it were to match your sweat sodium losses, it would exceed quite quickly your gut tolerance for sodium intake. Maximum amount of sodium that most folks on average can handle during exercise is 1200 to 2000 milligrams of sodium per liter. If you are one of those lucky folks that can consume 
like 1.5 liters of fluid per hour on a hot training session, then you may actually be able to consume close to 3000 milligrams of sodium per hour and offset all of your sweat losses. But that's not most people. Most people can consume like one to 1.2 liters fluid per hour. A safe amount of sodium that is really low likelihood of causing GI distress would be like a thousand or 1200 milligrams of sodium. It's worth trialing more during training because if you are a person who experiences cramps or faintness, or you just want to maximize your blood volume because blood volume is closely tied to cardiovascular performance and endurance sport performance, finding out where that upper limit is for your sodium intake, uh, using good practices for implementing sodium intake, like using sodium citrate as at least part of it, it's a good idea and worthwhile to do. So what if your ideal consumption, that is to replace all of the sodium lost in your sweat, is higher than your gut tolerance? You should target whatever your gut tolerance is, which for most folks is like 1200 to 1800, and you can see there's a discrepancy in my slide there, but so, some people really can't handle 2000 milligrams uh, of sodium per liter, but it's, it's pretty rare. And I'm not sure that a lot of folks can handle that for like many, many hours on end, and especially if hydration is compromised already because gut admissibility, so to speak, to sodium and fluid and carbs and anything you put in your gut tends to go down. Your gut gets less happy absorbing things if you get dehydrated. As you get dehydrated, your upper limit for sodium concentration in the fluid you're drinking might go down. You might have to start at 1500 milligrams of sodium per liter at the beginning of a training session and then drop it off to like 1200 or 1000 milligrams as you get dehydrated because your gut gets less responsive. Finally, higher concentration and higher fluid intake is better until uh, your gut tolerance is bumped up against or until your ideal intake to replace what's lost in your sweat is achieved. For example, a bike ride that starts at 1 p.m. and you're riding up a long hill for a couple of hours and then as you approach sunset you're riding mostly downhill, you might be much warmer and much sweatier, much higher sweat rates as you climb the hill in the heat of the day. And then as you're descending in the evening, it might get quite cool and your sweat rate might drop off substantially. So you may actually need to bump up against your gut tolerance for the first few hours with your sodium intake and your fluid intake. And then the last hour while you descend back to home, you could have your sodium intake drop off to maybe 700 milligrams or 600 milligrams per liter. You're just not sweating that much. And when sweat rates go down, so Sodium concentrations also tend to go down within that sweat, so it's a double whammy of reduced sodium losses, and so you have a lower physiological need, a lower ideal intake, and you're no longer needing to bump up against those gut limits. Let's talk pre-training. What should we do pre-training? Days where your ideal consumption is less than your gut tolerance, you can do like 500 to 1000 milligrams of sodium per liter in the three hours leading up to training. I would say a minimum of a half a liter of fluid total. Basically what I'm saying here is when you're not going to be sweating that heavily, the ideal sodium consumption during training is like pretty modest and your gut tolerance is like way up here. You can handle a lot more. You don't really need to do a whole lot during the pre-training window because you're going to be able to supplement what you need during training. Just have like a pint of water and and 500 to 1,000 milligrams per liter. Days where your ideal consumption, that is your physiological needs during training, is greater than your gut tolerance. 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of sodium per liter in the three hours leading up to training consume at least a liter of fluid and could do more. And then finally, days where your ideal consumption is like way, way higher than your gut tolerance, meaning like you're gonna be sweating heavily for three or four hours. So you're gonna be losing way more sodium than you could consume during training. 1,750 to 3,000 milligrams of sodium per liter of fluid as a concentration for the three hours leading up to training and a minimum of two liters of fluid. So essentially, you're, you're preloading a bit. You're preloading your body with fluid and you're consuming sufficiently high sodium that your body hangs on to that fluid rather than just flushing it out. If you consume less than like 1800 milligrams of sodium with each liter, you'll become eudhydrated, normally hydrated, but you won't preload much. I'm actually gonna do another video on advanced strategies for preloading blood volume before a really long or really sweaty type events. So you might be wondering why endurance beverage companies don't have higher sodium amounts in their beverages? And I think the answer is two or threefold. They don't want to lose customers by causing GI distress. They don't want to have too high of a sodium. There's like this sodium has a bad rap and cause high blood pressure and heart problems. Not really, but some people think that. Finally, to do it well, they have to use slightly more expensive ingredients like sodium citrate, which is totally not true because carbohydrates are really cheap and the margins on carbohydrate products are enormous. Well, in some companies' cases, it comes down to they don't understand how much sodium a person should consume, but I 
I think the biggest thing is they're trying to limit customer churn. If customers were to dose up pretty high on their sodium, like say company puts a thousand milligrams of sodium per serving and the customer decides to have three or four servings in their one liter bottle, that customer is going to have GI distress and end up in the bathroom a lot during their race or training session or whatever. And they're going to tell all their friends that, oh, supplement X made me have diarrhea or whatever. And I think that's predominantly why most companies will have like 200 milligrams of sodium per serving or 400 milligrams of sodium per serving. And it just, it leaves people open to losing blood volume because they're not retaining the fluid that they are consuming. Uh, you'll notice that if you consume a pretty low sodium endurance sport mix, you will probably have to pee more. It would be nice if you could retain all of that fluid in your blood instead of it going through your kidneys and into your bladder and then out, but your body won't hold on to it if you're not putting it in with enough sodium. That's the primary function of sodium when you consume it is to maintain your blood volume while you do endurance training and blood volume is critically important for cardiovascular performance. All right, that's all I got for you today. If you found this helpful, share it with people. Thanks for watching. Until next time.